Hi guys, my name is Crystal and welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome old subscribers, welcome new. If you like my videos, please press the like button, please do subscribe. Alexa, good morning. Good morning. Right, so I'm just going to now play my mother's voicemail message because my last video where I was talking about being abused as a child and my life was interrupted by a phone conversation from my mother Jennifer. voicemail you have one new message and one saved message first new message received today at 9 12 a.m hello Janessa it's me your mom Jennifer speaking to you from our landline phone to you Janessa wishing you a good day hope you have a good day uh, I'll phone you again later on today and I'll see you next week okay bye for now hope you're okay to listen to the message again, press 1. To save the message, press 2. Your message will be saved for 7 days first. Saved. Right, so I'm working through my own therapy at the moment. I'm working through my own therapy. So my mother interrupts my video while I'm trying to go through what happened to me as a child. Um, Trudy, next door, goes out with the sausage dog. The dash, dash hound, after my mother speak, tries to speak to me on my phone, Trudy goes out. And remember, this is not the Trudy at my mum's address, because my mother has a neighbour called Sue, and her daughter's called Trudy, right? So there were two Trudys. There's one, my, I've got a next door neighbour called Trudy here in Rochester, and that's the one I'm talking about, okay? She's just gone out with her sausage dog. And this is the time, 9.29, where that Charlie appears on the field with Samir, the white skinny dog. And it's not me going out on the field. I'm here at 9.29, trying to go the, through the history of what happened to me. Genestra or Crystal, if you like. So yes, when I, my dad, was a very violent man, Derek was. He was a drinker and he was a heavy smoker as, a, as well. There was a history of violence between Jennifer and Derek, my parents, before I was even born. Uh, in 1967, my brother Dylan died and my dad was charged with manslaughter. Um, obviously, I didn't know about this. I wasn't told. I was a kid. I mean, if, to disclose something like that to a child could damage them anyway. Um, I carried on going to school. I was a very quiet child. My dad was abusing me, hitting me, hitting my mother in front of me, and I wouldn't speak. I was I was a quiet child. I was also threatened with death if I told anyone anything. I can say it now. My father's dead. Um, so I carried on this this in this toxic family relationship I had no choice you don't control your parents you're the child they should be looking after you caring about you protecting you and in my case my parents never did I was subjected to the utmost horrendous beatings um, I was afraid and scared in my own home as a child and I had to somehow survive and got, not get killed myself by appeasing my father, you know, because if you upset your dad, he's going to belt the shit out of you, you know. So I carried on like this. The school didn't pick up on it. They didn't seem to care that they, they sent me for deaf tests, hearing tests, because they thought I was deaf. I wouldn't speak because my father had frightened me into not talking by threatening to kill me if I told anyone what he was doing to me or my mother. 
So it carried on and carried on, and then when I started developing, turning into a woman, and you grow breasts and pubic hair, my father turned his interest to sex. And I was already being beaten, beaten into submission, if you like, forced to do things I didn't want to do. Uh, and I used to wet myself when I saw my father, piss myself when he came in from work and hide under the stairs. Wet myself. A child doesn't need that stress. A child shouldn't be beaten. A ch child shouldn't be sexually touched. But back in those days, no one talked about incest. No one talked about it. It was a dirty word. No one, no one said anything. They keep your mouth shut. Churches would blame victims. They would blame the victims. What had you done to make to make, to make the perpetrator do that to you? So you kept quiet. I was angry with my mother because I thought that's my mum, and she's not doing anything to protect me from this monster. She's just letting him do it. And then I witnessed that when my mum did call the police out, that they would actually act stupid. They would side with my father. He would turn around to the police and say, oh, she's mad, she's mad, she's lying. And they would believe my dad and then walk off. And then my dad would give my mother another good hiding because she'd reported him to the police, you see. So me and my mother were trapped with this monster in this masonette with no garden uh, and I used to scream I used to shout I can't even, uh, the neighbors must have heard a child screaming um, so basically he started touching me when I was 10 years old 10 years old touching me because you know I've, I've always had big breasts I'm big breasted my sister was he was a breast man my dad he liked to touch your boobs Touch a woman's breasts. A fl florandera, a lech. You know, thinking he's got the right to touch, touch women's uh, private parts and get away with it. He had friends in the police force. He had mates with the police. He had friends in the police force and family in the police force. So they weren't going to do anything anyway. Um, so my mum, the domestic violence caused my mum to get mentally ill and she couldn't look after herself. She spent three weeks at a time in mental hospitals because he just used to belt the, sh the shit out of my mother in front of me, try, try to stop her breathing, give her black eyes and um, it was all being covered up. It was all being covered up. So every time my mum went down the shops or she was put away for three weeks in the likes of Maudsley Hospital with violent criminals, drug addicts and I used to go and visit my mum in this horrible place where you would see some of the most deranged people walking about and I'd be shit scared and I was a kid and my mum would be in this place for like three weeks at a time with these nutcases, she wasn't, she was being domestically abused. She shouldn't have been, she should be getting help and support for domestic abuse, not being put in the nut house. But back in the day, that's all my dad, if you, if you, it, that's how we used to control my mother. If you don't shut up, if you don't do as you're told, I'll have you back in the nut house. And he would. He'd ring the mental people up and they'd take my mum away. While my mum was away, he was sexually abusing me, he was touching my breasts, he was getting me to do all the adult wifely duties and, and, and um, touching me, making me cook the dinner, do the washing, shouting at me and treating me like his wife. He's 10 years old. This carried on up until the age of 16 when I went to go and seek help from a doctor, a doctor, and it was a black male doctor with a bald head, and he said to me, what's going on? 
and I said my dad's abusing me, I need some help and support. He turned around to me and he said, um, I, I, you know, what have you done to make your father do that to you? You must have done something. Because I'd gone for help at the age of 16. Now, if it was a 10, 11, 12 year old sat in a doctor's surgery saying that my dad's touched me, I don't even know if they would have done something then, but I was too frightened at that age to tell anybody. So I'd reached the age of 16, I'd read about abuse in magazines, television shows, and I thought, I've had enough of this. I'm going to do something about it. So I, I went to a doctor, and, and he turned around and said it was my fault. My fault. By that time, I'd reached 16, and nobody could be bothered to help me. So I'd reached the age of 16, and they, they thought they'd just washed their hands of me. Nobody wanted to know. So I'd been abused from a very young child up to the age of 16 when I get the courage to speak, to tell somebody I'm told it's my fault. And uh, yeah, there was, I, I tried to, to commit suicide when I was 16. I was working, I'd actually believed in God and I thought someone was going to help me and now I had the courage to tell. I told and somebody let me down, they said it was my fault. A few months later, I tried to take an overdose at my workplace. Um, when I took an overdose at my workplace, um, I was taken to a hospital in one of my colleagues' cars. I was, I can't remember exactly what happened, whether my stomach was pumped, but they kept an eye on me, how much paracetamol I'd taken. No one offered me any support or counselling. Nobody actually asked me why I did it and I was sent back home where the sexual abuse by my father continued. See? This by now was the 80s and people still weren't openly talking about incest, child abuse and that kind of thing. They weren't talking about it. It was still a thing you didn't speak about. Fortunately now, more people are coming forward and speaking about it. And children are getting the courage to phone and talk to teachers. My father was a monster. He was allowed to, to, to carry on his campaign of terror where he was keeping my mother caged and beaten and then threatening her with mental health hospitals if she didn't do as she was told and obviously when she went into mental, mental hospitals I was being sexually abused and mistreated by my father and I think it was being done on purpose as I've said I think this flat is bugged there's listening devices I have been abused by several men in my lifetime and I think it's been, been watched and listened to. I am now 54 years of age. I want my freedom. I don't want to be abused by men anymore. My father has damaged my childhood. I could have been somebody. My life has been wasted and it's been covered up and hidden by the police and the government. And are the royal family involved? Are they? Because can you tell me, whenever my mum and I called the police, my dad, the monster, was allowed to continue his evil after the police had left. And the police actually left me and my mother in more danger after reporting him to the police and not doing anything with him. Not doing anything with him. So he got more violent and me and my mother were actually in danger of being murdered by my father after the police left, after we reported him. And they did nothing. There's a whole lot more to this story. There's relatives that turned a blind eye, my mum's family 
would watch my dad treat my mum like shit and laugh and talk about my mother behind her back and I'd witness that as a kid and I'd try and speak but I, and I would think you're taking the mick out of my mum and my dad's just given my mum a good hiding. I hate you, I was thinking. Um, you can't help but sometimes blame your mother as well. I don't think she should have married him after he hit her. But then she must have had her reasons. But um, I've been brought up. I, I've lost everything. I, 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 because of what I learned as a child to appease men when men get violent to try and stop it I was put in my father's bed to keep him quiet um, I just learned to like you've got to make a man happy you know so all the relationships I've had have been by, with violent aggressive men and then I've gone you tried to appease them and I think it's far better to carry on my life by myself because this Charlie situation that I was forced into I didn't want to be put in that situation this old man trying to to touch me like my you know you know you don't kiss someone and touch someone when you don't know them Oh my, if it's a friendly hug, or hello, nice to see you today, that's different. This guy was doing what my dad was doing. Took me to his flat. Oh, he showed me his bedroom. Charlie showed me his bedroom. He went, this is my microphone. This is my keyboard. This is my little studio. And he had candles and aromatherapy stuff like my dad had in his bedroom. What the fuck was someone trying to do to me with this Charlie character? And then you get intimidated because they can't groom you and carry on the abuse. You get intimidated. Sent to Coventry because you're standing up for yourself and not putting up with it. Ignoring it. Ignoring you because you won't do as you're told. Someone's idea of a joke was it to send this Charlie onto the field, get me to go back to his flat where his girlfriend was sat there with her long black hair with these funny glasses on. She had these ridiculous glasses on. I don't know whether they thought they were trying to hypnotise me or something. She was sat there with these funny glasses and she was lying, lying through her teeth. I didn't believe a word she was saying. Told me that she was abused by several doctors. And, you know, a couple can work together. You can have a couple of abusers. Look at Rosemary and Fred West. You've got to be careful. I was lured back to this flat, this guy shows me his bedroom and I'm thinking I've just come round here for a cup of tea and a chat. What the fuck? But you get punished, you get punished and sent to Coventry if you dare tell anyone what's going on, if you dare speak about it or tell anyone. We're not going to speak to you. We're going to intimidate you. We're going to call, make sure your name is blackened. When they're the fucking perpetrators. Needless to say, I, I, I avoid Charlie like the plague. I, I don't go back to strange people's flats when I don't know them because there are couples that are pedophiles and abusers and I'm a very vulnerable person, I'm, I'm still trusting. Yeah, every time you call the police when I was verbally abused, I had the photograph of this guy that had done it, nothing's done, nothing's done. And why do you think I have to act tough 
and keep people away from me. Why do you think I do that? It's protection for myself. I'm not stuck up. Why can't you just have, have a, 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 a relationship where, where you, you date normally? You meet someone, you go for a coffee, and after a few weeks you get to know each other. What is this perverted sex? Everything's sexual. I don't operate like that. And I never did. I hadn't had a boyfriend up until the age of 18. I was 18. I hadn't had one boyfriend before my husband. So who turned me into this so-called slut and slag and toy to be a passed around through men and women? Who turned me into that? Who destroyed my life and allowed it to happen? I want answers, I want compensation, and I don't care if I'm sent to Coventry. I don't want to mix with people that abuse me. See you later.